I want you to keep in mind that you are an energetic being. And I don't mean this in the spiritual sense, although that certainly tracks alongside this. No, I mean you are literally a system of complex mechanics that utilizes electronic pulses and electromagnetic energy. Your thoughts, your senses, they create fast pulses of electric charge that light up your nervous system and your neural circuitry, and your heart produces an incredibly strong electromagnetic pulse, which actually produces an electromagnetic field around your body. So it's no secret that human beings uh, produce an incredibly strong electromagnetic field. In fact, this field typically extends outwards in all directions to roughly three feet from your actual body. Now take into account the fact that your thoughts are literally energetic and your emotional resonance is also energetic. For example, the rush of love and happiness you might feel when seeing a loved one after being separated for a long time. That strong feeling you have is quite literally on a physiological and bioelectric chemical level producing massive amounts of electromagnetic energy, which is going to be resonating within your magnetic field. It's going to have a signature attached to it. The same can be said for fear and anger. Strong emotional responses are going to cause stronger energetic resonance, which means the stronger the emotion, the more profound a signature it's going to be producing as a type of discharge within your electromagnetic field. Think about the people who say they can see an aura around a person. The aura is usually represented in different colors depending on that person's character or current emotional state. Is it really so far-fetched to suggest that these people are representative of a small percentage of the population who have a sufficient level of sensitivity to aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum that most people do not? And this allows them to see the coronal electromagnetic discharge of your current emotional state of resonance that's being projected from your energetic state and subsequently being resonated as a specific signature within your electromagnetic field. Is that really an outlandish idea? Because to me it feels quite logical that this is what they're seeing. The electromagnetic field that's produced by your heart is more than a hundred times greater in strength than the field generated by the brain. The heart also contains enough neurological components to be considered a little brain within the body. It's called the intracardiac nervous system, and it's composed of approximately 40,000 neurons. Now, I believe that understanding the power of the heart in both a scientific and even a more spiritual sense is crucial to successful contact because you don't just have to be thinking about these things, you have to be feeling them. You have to be truly feeling them on an emotional level. And what I'm suggesting is that this electromagnetic field that's produced by your heart, which is in of itself interlaced with all the electromagnetic fields and networks that surround us, remember that we are immersed in an ocean of electromagnetic energy and other energies, hard radiation, soft radiation. It's all around us. And we produce a localized field of it around our bodies that resonates our emotional state within it, producing signatures that perhaps by a more sophisticated intelligence could be understood, recognized, categorized. My suggestion is that you can expand the area of effect of your own electromagnetic field. You can expand it from three feet in all directions to all places in all directions at once. Like the photon we mentioned earlier, you can take your own electromagnetic field from its collapsed particle state of three feet and turn it into a wave of energy that resonates across reality. And again, if this electromagnetic field around you is resonating your state of mind around your body, what you're doing in order to have successful contact is you are resonating your state of mind across the universe and you are tuning your state of mind towards the intentions of contact and you are charging this state of mind and in doing so charging your field of electromagnetism with the emotional resonance of love, of unity, of peace, of curiosity, you are in the simplest way sending out waves of love into the universe. The hippies were right the whole time. But seriously, this is something that I feel can be explained by physics, uh, but it also incorporates that fundamental and vital aspect that science has ignored for far too long. The spirit of love, the nature of emotion. These two things, intellect, emotion, science, spirit, 
married together create the understanding that I'm trying my best to outline here. You can send waves of electromagnetic energy out from your body and into the universe, perhaps even through dimensions, and you can literally imbue these waves, you can charge them with the emotional resonance of your choosing. So why would you choose fear or any other negative emotion? No, you're going to send uh, love. You're going to say, hey, I'm here and I feel love. I feel connection. Do you feel it? Can you hear me? You're not trying to summon demons. This is where people in the UFO community get confused. You're not going out there with the intention of having anything other than a peaceful contact. And if you don't believe that your uh, setting of your intentions is enough, if you think I'm naive and I'm opening myself up to manipulation, then that's okay. Don't do this type of thing. But I don't think you're right. I really don't. This to me feels like a process of getting a sentient species to expand and learn and develop in sentience. Whatever responds to you in these states, it's my belief that they are trying to show you that it's working and that you should keep doing it. So now you have a rough idea for my own personal model for the mechanics of this. The information is flowing across the cosmic network of energies that lie at the foundation level of reality. And you, being the complex electromagnetically resonant system that you are, can literally send and receive packets of information across time and space, utilizing these cosmic networks of electromagnetism and perhaps other energetic mediums, just like a computer receives and sends messages across the energetic network that comprises the internet. This is not a, a wild concept. We are literally doing this already. I'm just asking you to look at it in grander terms, in cosmic terms, to see the universe as the internet and to see yourself as the computer that's seeking to connect with another. But we have to sometimes set aside the cold, analytical science side of this and open ourselves up to that part of the human experience that is for all of us on a daily basis far more important. And that's how you feel your emotional state, your sense of importance. Because if you want to have contact with the kind of intelligences that I believe we're reaching out to through these methods, and I believe these intelligences are benevolent, if you want to tune into the peaceful frequency then you're going to need to ground your awareness in that emotional state. Believe it or not, but peace and love are like really important. These are profound energetically emotional states that often can define the grandest moments of human experience. And it is through these states of emotional resonance that you want to be operating on when you're attempting to make contact. You want to be broadcasting the emotional state of love, of peace, of curiosity, to know if others are out there that understand these concepts and would like to respond in kind with their own loving response. Like I said before, the whole photon analogy, you want to take your state of mind from the collapsed state where your electromagnetic field is operating at around three feet in all directions. You want to calm your mind, you want to calm your body, and from this place you want to start to visualize or imagine your thoughts to be echoing out from you and you want your thoughts to be orientated towards your intention to have peaceful contact and on top of this you want to be drawing up your emotional strength by focusing on love on gratitude on peace whatever gives you the best feeling you want to charge your thoughts with those feelings and this isn't woo woo stuff this is science this is you charging your electromagnetic system and firing off a message you want to push waves of love and appreciation and curiosity out into reality. This is how I feel safe doing these practices because this is a very intense concept for people and many are afraid of attracting unwanted and negative attention from engaging in this, which I completely understand. But all of my experiences have felt like little flashlights of confirmation little nods in the form of a visual exhibition, a confirmatory reward of some form that tells me, yes, keep doing this, keep using your mind like this. See, we are, we are here, we can hear you, we can hear you. Let me show you that we can hear you. And bam, you have a sighting of something anomalous. That's how it works. And as I said before, would you not want to be reaching out to the highest order of emotional sophistication that's out there? Would you not want to extend your invitation for contact towards a benevolent intelligence 
And so without putting the literal words in your mouth, because I think you need to have your own way of articulating these things, you need to come from a place of love, of peacefulness, of genuine curiosity. This is what yields results for me. When I'm in a very calm state and I'm staring at the stars and I begin to model my thoughts towards usually my ideas about the universe and my hopes for seeing something that believes in what I believe in. And when I truly feel myself move into that more expanded state and it almost feels like my thoughts are echoing out into reality, at the same time my emotional resonance is surging, this is when things happen. Mm -hmm.